Good morning. Welcome uh, to the priest's sacristy, probably a place you've never been before. But this is where priests, deacons, and sometimes seminarians come to prepare for Mass. And you can't see it, but I have a crucifix uh, right behind the camera right now uh, because we need to make sure that we're focused on the Lord uh, in all things in what we do, and especially when we're preparing to celebrate the sacrifice of the Mass. So let us take a moment to pray uh, for the grace to do as he asks us in this video and in our lives. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, we offer you a prayer of thanksgiving for all the gifts that you give us in the Mass, in the Church. And we ask for the grace specifically today to come to a greater knowledge and understanding of your Church through the liturgical colors through the vestments that the priests wear and what they symbolize, and how they draw us to recognize your love for us and for your church. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, so the first vestment that a priest puts on, uh, or the first vestment that I put on, is the alb. And the alb is a simple white garment symbolizing the dignity we receive in baptism, the purity that we're supposed to carry from that moment of baptism unto eternal life. And so we put on the owl with that recognition that God has called us to be pure as we serve him, again, especially as we serve at this Mass. The second article is the censure. And the censure, depending on if you're a priest of the diocese or you're a priest of an order, can be different. But in its simplest form, it's just a cord. Practically, it keeps my owl from tripping me. But it symbolizes the promises as a priest that I make to remind myself that I've promised obedience to the bishop that I promise to live as, sim as simply as I can, and that I promise to be uh, pure with myself. And so I put on the cincture, just like that. And then I pull up my alb a little bit so I don't trip over it. This alb, my parents got me, which is a little bit long. They thought I was taller than I was, I think. So, these are the undergarments for the priest. The next is has to do with the liturgical color. So we're going to go over all the liturgical colors and we'll start with green, which is a reminder of ordinary time. And in ordinary time, it's the normal life of Jesus. The other colors represent different aspects of Jesus' life. But green is just his daily life and how we're, we come to know him and how he lives and how he he acts, and we see him on the Sermon on the Mount, we see him teaching, we see him healing, we see him preaching and preparing his people to receive him and understand who he is. And so when we wear green, it symbolizes that it's an ordinary time in which to come to know Jesus. And we're actually in ordinary time week 25. Uh, this was the last Sunday, which... You may be watching the video much later than that, but we're in Ordinary Time right now, and we will be until the 34th week of Ordinary Time. There are 34 weeks of Ordinary Time, uh, which can be a little confusing, but we're not going to go into that. So what I do is I kiss this, which is the stole, which goes under the chasuble, which is the outer garment. The stole in Roman times was a symbol of your authority. And so when I wear this stole, I put on the authority of Jesus. And so I signify by wearing a stole that I am a priest. And I tuck the stole into my cincher just to hold it so it's not flapping around or anything like that. And then I tighten it up a little bit. The chasuble is generally ornate uh, again, it's the liturgical color green, but 
it has different symbols and signs on it. This one has a chalice on it with the Eucharist and many other symbols like wheat and all kinds of different symbols uh, to remind us and draw us to what we're celebrating. But the chasuble is what we wear to show the dignity of our Lord, to draw us to that divine reality that we're about to celebrate in the Mass. So it's not to draw attention to me, but to lift up our, our hearts and our minds to our Lord. And that is what we wear most of the time, uh, ordinary time, and green. The other liturgical colors, which we're going to go through one by one, I'm not going to put them on, but all the liturgical color, colors have a stole and a chasuble. And so the stole goes underneath, so you can see the stole a little bit underneath my chasuble, but it's underneath the chasuble. You can see the stole underneath the chasuble, but you can still see the stole uh, underneath showing, again, uh, the authority given to me through the bishop, ultimately from God, uh, to celebrate the Mass. But the next liturgical color I want to speak on is white. And so white is the color that we wear for celebration. And because every Mass is a celebration of our Lord's life and his, his gift to us and his sacrifice for us, you can always wear white to any Mass. But now, generally, like I said, we wear the liturgical color. But if we have a big liturgy and we have many priests, they'll just bring white, because white, again, is that universal color. But it's also on our high holy days, when we celebrate Christmas, Christmas Day, and Christmas week. And generally, those bigger celebrations, we celebrate eight days of that celebration, uh, eight days of Christmas, and eight days of Easter. And we wear white during that whole time. It's also a color that we wear for certain saints, uh, saints that are uh, virgins or are whole, like they're, they're professed. Uh, different saints will wear white for different reasons, uh, or we wear white to represent them and to give them give glory to God through them, through the, the white vestment. But it's a, a vestment that shows us that we're celebrating. This stole is a special stole that I've been given that is a Marian stole. It has the little bit of blue in it, so it's still white. We can't wear blue vestments, but we can have blue uh, intertwined in our white. And so we have the Marian M, as well as flowers that are blue, that are on top of the white, and gold. Gold and white are equivalent. We wear gold and white uh, either or. So the vestment the white has gold in and laid into it. Uh, again, showing that celebration because gold is the recognition of dignity and royalty uh, and beauty. And so we, we use that uh, with our white as well, as well as some of the other colors. As you can see, I have gold inlaid in my green as well. So, that's white. Now, and so we only really use white, or you only see white on those high holy days. Uh, during the week, you'll see it for different saints, but if we're wearing white, it's a celebration. You know it's a celebration. So we have uh, the next liturgical color is purple. And there's actually two purples, which we'll get into in a minute. But the first purple is for our Advent season. And our Advent season is the first season of the liturgical year. So we begin our church year with Advent. Even though it's not, it's normally the beginning of December or the end of November, uh, it is our church beginning of the year, uh, despite it not being the beginning of the year, which is obviously January 1st. But the purple that we wear for Advent, both purples, both for Advent and Lent, are for preparation uh, and penance and getting ready for the special season. Advent is preparing us for Christmas. And so we wear purple uh, in preparation, but in Advent we wear a special royal purple because we're preparing for the king. Uh, as you can see, this is a nice royal purple versus the Lenten purple, which is more maroon uh, with 
it's purple with red in it, a more reddish purple. And that's to point us to the fact that we're preparing for Jesus' passion, which is, you know, obviously has his suffering involved in it, uh, his, his blood. Uh, so that red comes from that. And so these two purples both draw us to repentance and to prepare, but different aspects. We're rejoicing because of the coming of the King, and we're preparing for both the joy and the sorrow that comes with Jesus' passion and his resurrection. And Advent has four weeks in it, and Lent has six. And because both of these celebrations have at the end the white of the celebration of the season for Christmas and Easter, we are about two-thirds of the way there, so on the third week of Advent and the fourth week of Lent, we have a special color that helps us prepare for the celebration to come. It's like a little reminder that maybe, you know, in our penance, in preparing, we need to be reminded of the joy that comes after. And so we wear rose <coughs> for those two, because in between the color of purple and white is rose. And so the middle of, or the third week of Advent is Gaudate, which means to rejoice. And the fourth week of Lent is Laltere, which is also to rejoice. Uh, just different declension in Latin, both in Latin, uh, those words that call us to rejoice. And so the third week of Advent and the fourth week of Lent remind us with this rose vestment that we're called to rejoice uh, despite being maybe in penance, maybe in preparedness for that coming celebration, but it's almost here. And so we wear a rose to remind us of that. And it, also, if you remember, we also light the pink candle on our Advent wreath uh, to remind us of Gaudate Sunday as well. Okay. And then our last liturgical color is red. And the red, just like we celebrate the beginning of this liturgical year on the beginning of Advent, we celebrate the church's birthday on the day of Pentecost. Fifty days after uh, Easter, Jesus rises into, the de uh, rises into heaven and sends the Holy Spirit. And so the day of Pentecost is the day that Jesus sends the Holy Spirit to be on his apostles, be in his apostles. When they're in the upper room, the Holy Spirit comes down and shows up on their head like tongues of fire. And so we wear red to recognize the gift of the Holy Spirit, as well as uh, just the birth of the church. So the birth of Jesus is an advent, but the birth of the church is in Pentecost, uh, the day that God gives us the grace to sustain ourselves despite Jesus being in heaven. Uh, he gives us the grace to sustain ourselves through the Holy Spirit and through his sacraments, uh, primarily through the Holy Spirit, which we'll go over when we go over the Mass, especially seeing how the Holy Spirit acts uh, through the hands of the priest and through the prayers uh, in the church. Red also, like white, we see white for different saints as well as the celebration. Red also represents our martyrs, those who gave their blood for our Lord. Uh, they were persecuted or, or put themselves in danger for love of God to the point of their death. And so red reminds us of that sacrifice as well. So red is the last liturgical color. And it's so great to go over all these ways in which the Lord expresses himself in our liturgical year and in, in his church. Uh, so it's great to be with you to talk about this. And then we'll, we'll go into uh, some of the vessels and special liturgical items that we use in the priest sacristy, or the, the sacristy, the non-priest sacristy. Generally, we're going in there right now, uh, but that, uh, that we use to prepare for the Mass, and then we'll go over the, the Mass itself and then different aspects of that. So I'll see you in a little bit in the next video. God bless you.